What's up guys? Welcome back to Flippo's Garage. Well, as you can see, we're actually in the driveway. Today we're finishing the project we started on the 2016 Honda Pilot, the CV axle replacement. In the first video, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. I'll have a link in the description. We actually did the CV axle removal on this vehicle. In today's video, we're going to be doing the installation only. If you haven't seen that and you want to check it out, it'll be in the description. There's going to be special tools you need and tips and tricks along the way. So make sure you watch the whole video so you don't miss a thing. So like my sons like to say, let's get it, brother. Let's go. So first thing you want to do is put your old CV axle next to your new CV axle. Make sure they're the same length. Make sure it's the same part. Now what you want to do is take a rag and wipe everything down. Get it as clean as possible. Get all the surfaces like the uh, carrier plate right there where the um, intermediate shaft and the CV axle uh, are joined together. There's a bearing right there. But you want to have that surface clean uh, as clean as possible. The cleaner your workspace, the easier it is, you know, to move around and work so guys real quick i just want to go over a couple things before we uh, throw this new cv axle in do you check and make sure that you have the right part you also want to check and make sure there's no damage to the part they can sometimes get damaged in shipping another thing is there is a seal where the intermediate shaft slides into the uh transfer case front diff whatever you want to call it um there's a seal right there Mine wasn't leaking before, so I'm not going to change it out. I know it's a good idea. I probably should. Um, and I'm going to recommend you guys change it out as well. If it's leaking, there's no questions. You know, change it out. If it's not leaking before, it shouldn't leak after. You know what I mean? So, I'm not changing mine out because I'm in a time crunch. But I'm going to recommend, just go ahead and do it while you're in there. You don't have to do this job twice because it started leaking down the road. <laughs> So I'm sure there's going to be some people watching this after the part one video just because they're going to start running into issues with aftermarket parts like I am. So let me show you real quick one of the issues that I'm fucking starting to run into. And we just got the CV axle in. We ain't even began yet. You see that bottom ear of the mid shaft carrier bearing uh, bolt on plate right there. Well, there's a black heat shield right here and all that all that does is protect the cv axle from the fucking exhaust that's pretty much right on it but our fucking bottom bolt hole the side of it is touching that heat shield so we're just a cut hair off of being able to bolt that thing in so now i get to mark it pull it back off and fucking shave that side of the ear down. There's what we got shaved down. We're gonna take it to the side of the washer. They got welded on there. You might be wondering how I'm gonna do that. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I got this carbide tip. We're gonna try that, belt sander, whatever you got, use it, knock it down. If, you're, if you run into this problem, use whatever you gotta do to take that metal off. Took a little bit of the washer off, chamfer your edges. Next thing we're gonna do, 
we're going to put the two bolts in the mid shaft carrier bearing i'm going to put a little bit of loctite on these the blue loctite just a dot that's it we're going to tighten these to 40 foot pounds 40 42 something like that bad news I fucked up the ball joint I know the ball joint shot already back there that back one shot that bushing over there is fucking uh, shot um, but I was trying to save a few bucks on this install and do this fucking lower control arm later because it all comes in one piece you can't just buy the fucking ball joints and pop them out on this like you can in old Chevy's so it is what it is guys we're gonna get that fucking part ordered probably another three hundred dollars might as well do them both since we're doing it so i guess installation's gonna have to wait until i get that new the new control arms i'll see y'all when i get the parts so remove your hanger losing daylight boys They make a tool for control arms. It looks like a chain link and it actually goes on here like this and then you take a long pry bar and with leverage you can push it down. You can achieve the same thing with like a ratchet strap or make your own chain. OTC is the one that makes the tool. <coughs> but uh, you know, we like to do things the hard way around here, brother. We're gonna try to get this thing in here now. No. Nope. Uh, make sure you got a good pry bar before you do this. Yeah, buddy. Hell yeah, brother. That would have been so much easier with the tool we needed. But when there's a will, there's a way. And we fucking made it happen either way. If you're broke like me, ratchet straps are your friend. Shit. Ah, cheap leverage. Now let's put this stabilizer, well, it's actually a sway bar link. Put a sway bar link back in. Just gotta get our tie rod in here. All right, I'll finish tightening that tie rod in just a second. Let's go ahead and get this bad bitch on. Put the lug nuts on to protect the threads. You don't want to flatten those out. We're going to torque this to 240 foot-pounds. 